Okay. Thanks for coming back to the third week of our bash introduction. Um, today we'll be talking about variables and loops. Um, and here I'm going, I'm de deviating a little bit from the software carpentry course um, because the software carpentry course kind of jumps over the variables, but I think it's hard to understand loops without variables. Um, now, before I start, um, if you want to follow me, um, up until now, all we've done was um, were, were, were things where the shell would call another, another program to run and do something. Um, but with variables, this is actually part of the bash itself. And therefore, if you use a different shell than bash, things might be a little bit different. Not much, but they might be a little bit different. So if you want to follow me along, what, you would what I would like you to do is type echo, which is the command that we had last year, uh, uh, last week, last, year, last week, um, that will just return, that will just print something on screen, and then dollar zero. And make sure that it says something like bash. It might be bash, it might be slash bin slash bash, it might be dash slash bin slash bash, something like that. If it doesn't, um, you can just run bash itself and then, um, and then uh, it, should, it should work. And you're, then you're in a shell. So, okay, um, let's clear this again. Uh, I just want to make, I just noticed something. Um, let's say we want to have the computer greet me. Okay, we can use the echo command that we just used and say, take hello Holger and types hello Holger. Wonderful, the computer greeted me. Um, but we would have to hard code the name for every user into this echo command. And that's a little bit tricky and we don't want to go there. And that's where variables come in. So the shell, the bash, the, 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 the shell has, has a whole range of variables and you can just create new ones out of thin air. If you want to get a list of all the variables that are currently set, you can type the command env for environment. And you can see there are, there are quite a lot. So if I, uh, currently there are 32 set, there, are, there might be situations where you, have, where you have 100 or 200 set. And if we look through these variables, we can see here that there is a variable called user. That's set to Holger W, which is my user ID on my computer. So we can use that. We can use that, we can say echo hello user. And it says hello user, that doesn't work. Um, it didn't, Bash did not realize that we wanted it to replace the word user with the variable, with the contents of a variable user. So to do that, we need to, um, did I by the way tell you that? I'm doing lots of things automatically. I'm going up and down with the up and down keys. I go back, I, I go back through, the, through the words before, uh, to, the, to the last commands. So that's something that I use quite often. So to, to, tell, um, to tell the bash that we want to, that we, it, should it should use the variable user, we have to precede it with a dollar sign. And we, we then say, uh, enter, it says, hello, Holger W. Um, that's nice and cozy, but that's not, but that's my username. It's better and it's automatic, but um, 
it's not it's not very nice. I want I wanted to have my real name. So how can I set a, a variable? That we can try it. We can say dollar name. Let's say because a different one. I don't want to overwrite the bash inter intrinsic uh, shell variables, and say Holger. And it gives me an error message equals Holger command not found. So what happened? Bash saw the dollar sign says, oh, that's a variable. He wants, to, he wants me to replace this with the contents of the variable name. And that's an empty string because it's not set yet. So in order to set the name, I have to do it without the dollar sign. And then it works. So um, so uh, if you are if you have your computer ready, you can have a little bit. Let's have a quick. Um, Exercise, what is the difference between these commands? Echo hello dollar name, then with double quotes, hello dollar name, and with single quotes, hello dollar name. And I noticed that the, um, that the slides turn these, the, these, these are the same one. The, these, are the, these are the same ones. Have a try. So the first one, so um, with the quotes, yes. So it doesn't look that different if I, if I put double quotes around this. Um, but what happens, what you notice where, where you see the difference is if you put more spaces in between. That is because in this instance, the bash has noticed, okay, I should run the command echo with argument one, hello, and argument two, the contents of the variable's name. And so echo had then, echo got these two, com these two arguments separately from each other and didn't know how many spaces were between them. Whereas if I put them in double quotes, it's, um, it, it gets the whole string, including the spaces, as one argument. And so it also puts the correct amount of, of spaces in here. And let's see the last one with single quotes. And that is something that, sorry, with single quotes, it does not do variable substitution. See, it, it, it printed dollar name. Okay, so when you assign, a, if, you've, if you tried this um, exercise, you might have tried something like, um, you've tried some, might, you might have tried something like that, where you put a space, nice and, nice and cute, put, a space around, put spaces around the uh, equal sign. Or, but you, you can't. Uh, or you might have do, done something name uh, name equals and then k k or you might have done something like all these failed so why do they fail because you put spaces in between them um, I'm going back to, I'll, I'll coming back to why this exactly happens. But if you have, you, you cannot put any spaces around the equal sign. And if you want to have, if, if the contents of the variables have spaces, what you need to do, you need to surround them by quotes. And then it works.
If you want to delete a variable, you can use the command unset. And here again, not a dollar sign because you want the you want to um, refer to the variable itself, not to the contents. And if I now say hello dollar name, there is no it, it doesn't have a name anymore. So that's that's nice, but I still again I would have if I wanted to read someone, I always would have to um, at hard code all these names. So what if we want to ask the user to supply the contents of I think. So for example, for that, we can use the read command. The read command, and again, you can use the manual man read to get more details, but you can add a prompt with minus P and then in quotation mark what you, what you want to uh, ask. And then you tell, give it the name of the variables that you want to set. And then the read command asks me for a prompt, please enter your name. And now, the name is set to that value. So now we can ask the user themselves, what's your name? And then they can re read them. But that's still, we can do still a little bit better. There is another command that's quite useful, often used, is the finger. And if you give it finger and then the user ID, and we know that we have the user ID, then you can see that I get a lot of information about that user, including the full name. So, Going back to last week, we can put a little bit of we can put a little bit of pipes and filters in there. So we only want the, the we only want the first uh, line. Then there are a mixture of of spaces and tabs between them. So let's um, uh, so let's. Uh, replace all the tab, all the tabs with spaces, and then co uh, and then um, collapse all consecutive spaces. So now it's nice and short. And then we can use an, yet another filter. Um, and again, I rec if you want to, I'm um, if you want to use it, these commands, the cut command basically um, cuts up the line according to certain, uh, in, in cuts, separates this line into fields. Um, with, in this case, I use a delimiter single space and I say print the fields four and the following. So one, two, three, four, five. So now we have our name. Of course, we want to put it into, an, into a variable. And to that, there are two ways. We go back here. Um, one is to say dollar open parentheses and at the end the close parentheses. So this means the, 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 this and this means run the command inside and replace all of that with the result of that. So if I run this, you can see that I have the name in there. Um, there's also a different way, version um, of that. It's practically the same. I think there's a minor difference, but not really. Just the reverse quotation, single quotation mark. That's um, the one in on your on your keyboard on the um, on the upper left. Um, button. That is the same thing.
Okay, so. Questions so far? Okay, I don't hear anything. Good. So what if we want to pass these environment variables on to a child process? Now, every program that you run in the bash is a child, is called a child of the shell because the shell started this process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another shell from within the shell because it makes it more convenient. But whether you run a Python script or a Fortran program or anything, everything, it would be the same thing. So we have set the name, but if I ran a bash and now I'm in the child process, so that's why I have put this uh, little child in uh, here before. If I then say echo dollar name, you see that it doesn't, it, it, the, 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 and this variable was not um, exported to the child process. So I've, I've terminated the shell. In order, to, um, in order for, this, for the child process to get this variable, what I have to use, I use export. And again, because um, I don't want the contents of this, I want, I want to say export the variable name. And now, if I, now the var variable is there. Now, um, I can also, give a variable just to the child process. So if I, if I did something like that, um, so I give, it looks like, like an assignment to a variable, but I'm not finished. I now make a space and now I tell it to run this program. That means run this program and in that program set the environment variable name to river tam. So, It's set, but if I go up, get out of that again, so it's not set in the in the actual in the parent shell. It's only set for the for the um, child's program. And by the way, that was coming back to the arrows that we had before. So first one. If we tried this, it would try, the bash would say, okay, I want, I want to run, obviously I want to run a program called name with the arguments equals Kylie and Fry. If I said name equal, equals, and then it has a space after that, it said, okay, apparently I want to run the program Kylie with the environment variable name set to an empty value and fry as the argument. And like that, it will try to run the program fry with the environment variable name set to Kaylee. And that's why you have to put it all into parentheses. So, um, I can use one variable I can use one variable inside another. So for example, I could say it now, I can use, um, create a new variable called greeting and say, hello, dollar name. Um, by the way, I'm typing all the variables in, in all caps. That's just convention. You can use uppercase and lowercase, but I would recommend to just stick to just uppercase because it makes, things easier to, if you have a, if you have a, um, if you, if you know what you're doing. But what you have to realize is that this works because 
the shell has substituted the variable name up here. If I were to, um, if I were to replace the variable name here, and now let's say echo greeting, it would still greet Simon because um, it hasn't done anything like that. And we can use that. M now saying names equals knock. And now I can use it to, uh, the fact that it's, that it's automatically substituting this um, at the assignment, I can use that to, um, to basically accumulate or aggregate um, variables. Wash and, by the way, does anyone realize where the name, where I get these names from? No, that's okay. So now, if I now say echo dollar names, you can see all of them are there because every time in this one, it has replaced the name, it has put the names from Malcolm from here and appended Zoe. Then it used Malcolm Zoe at appended wash and so on and so on. But that, is, that works fine if you have these spaces in between, but what if we don't have spaces in between? It doesn't work. Oh. Yeah. Why? Because here it has it has looked for a variable called foobar. So in order to do that, what I can do is to say, okay, look, the variable is only this part. I can encapsulate in curly braces. That way the, com the um, program knows exactly um, where the, where, what is the variable name and what should be appended. Or prepended, you can do that as well, if you want to. So let's go, let's go back to the names. Um, these curly braces come also, uh, also become important if you want to just get parts of the contents of a variable. So for example, um, if, I mean, I could just do that. That's the same, it's the same thing. But if I, for example, if I just want to get um, Zoe out, I can say colon seven, and that means that it jumps over the first seven characters. And then I say another colon three, and then it just says, and now print the next three. So now we have just so we, we've um, gotten just so yard. We can also say, okay, we want to have, we want to print only. We, by the way, the na names itself still contains the whole thing. So none of these the things that I'm now doing changes the actual variable. It just only prints part of it. If I want to, for example, remove the first name. I can say, okay, I want to omit everything up. I can, um, I can remove the short, let's say, I said with the single octothorpe, the hashtag, pound symbol, whatever, um, says, okay, um, in this case, what I want is I'm giving you a pattern and I want, I want you to remove the shortest match of this pattern from the beginning of the, the content of the variable. And the pattern in this case is star means any character and then a space. And that will remove everything up to the first space. And we get, we get the, whole, the whole crew without Malcolm. If we use two octothorps, then it will remove the longest possible match of this. 
So which is everything except for the last name because there's no space behind the last name. I can also do the same thing in reverse with the um, percent sign. But of course, then I have to remove the, change the pattern because now the pattern has to be a space followed by other characters. The single one just removes the last, uh, the, the shortest version of this pattern and two percent removes um, the longest possible version of this. So, exercise. If I have put the octothorpe at the beginning of the variable name, what does that do? Try it out. Try to set uh, a variable and then echo dollar, curly, curly, open curly braces, octothorpe, variable name, closing curly braces. And show me what, and, and have a look what that does. I hope you've tried, the, you've tried it out. Have you figured out what, what the result is? Yes, exactly. It's a number of letters. So because bar is three letters, this octothorpe says, okay, okay that's three. So, so far we've talked about string variables, so text. What if we want to have integer variables, numbers? We can say it E equals zero. And we can say E equals dollar I plus one. And then if we say echo dollar I, we get zero plus one because it thinks it's a string. Um, there, are where, there is the old way to do it, and that is to use a little program called BC. BC is a very basic uh, calculator. Um, I can use BC with, with this that we've learned about last uh, week. So we can pipe two plus three into BC and then it returns the thing. So we can say um, we can use this convoluted con convoluted thing, but um, it makes things quite um, complex. But we can, tell, we can tell Bash that this variable is an integer. And we do that with declare, and I'm putting a different name out, for example, declare minus i n equals six. And that way, that now shell, the shell knows, okay, the variable called with the name n is, um, is an integer. So if I now say n plus two, so and I get the correct uh, inter integer value out. In fact, and I'm not quite sure what I should think about it, um, Bash is so keen on using integer logic with integer variables that it will even 
replace these variables without the dollar sign. I'm not quite sure I like that because it, I think it makes it more confusing, but that's the way it is. Um, there is another way. You can also use a kind of C style syntax. If I set a variable called k to four, now this is a string variable because I haven't said anything else, but two open parentheses, and then I can use a C style command, for example, k plus plus would increment k, and now it's five. So, any questions so far? How are we in time? Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's go to four loops. You go into the creatures directory of the data shell. Uh, you will notice that you have um, you have uh, two files called, called basilisk and the unicorn. Um, I haven't cleaned up since I last did this <laughs> test tested this. Um, and let's say we want to work with these files, but we first want to make a backup of them. And we might want to say something like very easy stand, uh, star dot dat because we want to, to com copy that all into star dot back. Now, of course, it doesn't work. Um, even not even with a dot because bash has found that this matches some files, so it has replaced them, but it has not found anything that matches this pattern, so it left it intact. And CP then tried to copy um, all the files, all the dat files into a directory called star.bug and this, does, this fails. Um, we can't do that that easy. So what we need to do, we, need, we, we have to work on each file individually. So for that do we say for file in star.dat semicolon, oh, enter. And you can see that um, this is the first time we're not actually, um, we have an exception to the read evaluate print loop. We have pressed enter and Bash has analyzed this, this line and says, wait a moment, this command is not complete. So it gives us a second type of prompt. And this, you very commonly just uses just this little arrow, say, you're not finished with your command. Please continue your command. So I say do um, copy dollar file. And now I do what I did before. Actually, what I'll do first, I add an echo in there. And that is a common tip trick that I do if I make some modification if, if if I make modifications to a loop to files in a loop. The first thing I do is I put the echo before that. That way, it prints out what I want me what I want to do, and I can verify that this is really what I want to do. Do echo, copy file to, and now I use the, I use what we did before file percent because I want to remove from the end. But I want to use the uh, remove the extension dot from the file. And then add back to the file name. Enter. So I'm still I'm still doing. And because I'm that, and now I say done and say okay this is this is what I want you to do. And what it does now is it shows me the commands the first command cp basilisk dot dot 
basilisk.bug, see if you unicorn put dot dot to the unicorn put bug. And that's exactly what I want to do. So I go up and you can see that suddenly the whole thing is in a single line. And everywhere, all the commands are now separated by semicolons. And that's the same thing. So it means um, for, for bash, it's the same thing. Now I just go here and remove the echo. So it's no longer printing the statement instead of it's executing it. If I now look at the file, I have the, I have the backup files. Well, now what this does is, and this is again a, a slide from the software carpentry course. Um, but the, up here, similar to this, they, they don't use, the, they don't use the, uh, they use the, they just prepend, oops, they just prepend uh, something here. But they go through, it starts. Do I have a new value? So it, it, the bash has replaced the star dot dot into unicorn dot dot, basilisk dot dot. So, okay, it says, uni, okay, I found unicorn dot dot as my next word. So it sets the variable with named file name to basilisk dot dot. Um, and then prints this line goes back and says, do I have another value? Yeah, you still have, bas you still have unicorn dot dot. Okay, now for the next iteration, file name is unicorn dot dot. And then it says, do I have another value? No, you don't have an, okay, I'm finished. So by the way, you don't have to do that on files. So in this case, I have just put a sentence in here and then echo just this. And you can see with every iteration, it takes the next word. Word is, first word is you, then word is can't, take and so on. So exercise, use a loop, a for loop to greet all the members of your family or just four random names if you don't want to.
Okay. Okay. I'm I'm going to get a little bit faster because we're run we're running a little bit behind. So for name in Zoe and um, Haley do echo name. So for name in and then for names, do echo hello dollar name done. That's good. So what if we want to loop over numbers? There's a very easy way um, uh, to, to use if you want to loop over consecutive numbers. If you do something like three dot dot, uh, open curly braces, three dot dot five, that will, ex bash will expand this into three, four, and five. If you do three dot dot 50, it gets longer. So that's just a consecutive number, but um, So you can use that very quickly to just if you just want to generate a list of numbers. Um, if you want to have a little bit more detail, there is um, the SEQ command is quite quite good for sequence SEQ. Um, you can do something like uh, I want to have the, all the all them all of them with the same width. You can say I go from zero step size zero point one to one. And you can see it produces a list of, of sequential numbers, even floating point numbers. And of course, you can use this in a uh, you can use this like that uh, with, with dollop and then parentheses to say, I want the output of this command back in the for loop. Of the do, which I do often do. There's also a C style syntax. Again, with a two, and I'm flying a little bit blind now here because I forgot to put this in my notes. Does this work? Yes. So this is a C style syntax. If you if you've ever programmed C, this is exactly how you would you, how you how you would write a for loop in, in C. So um, we still have conditional loops and exit codes, and that that. that I want to go through that. So um, conditional loops. Now we've done a, this is all a loop where basically at the beginning, beginning of the loop, you know how often this loop should execute. You want to execute until it has exhausted all the names or all the file names or everything like that. Now conditional loops are different. It checks at each iteration whether a certain condition is still true. And the easiest one, while true, Echo. I'm adding a sleep in there because otherwise it will go to win. And now every second it will type hello there. And it will go to infinity because true is always true. Um, so I have to I have to back out with control C. Now what does it mean, true? Every program that you run with a shell. Every Fortran program, every shell program, everything will return a so-called exit code or return code. By convention, an exit code of zero means everything worked fine. 
everything that is not a zero says something weird happened. So for example, I just typed ls. You can access the error code with dollar question mark. That is, the, that is the error code of the ls command. It's zero because it worked fine. If I said ls um, holger, and now asked for the error code, it says error code one, something went wrong. Okay? Um, by the way, if I run now, it's again, now it's zero again. Why is it zero? Because it's the exit code of the echo command, and the echo command worked fine. So if you want to save something, you have to immediately after running the command that you want to execute for, you have to save it. Now you can say blah. Now you can say um, you, you still have it. So um, as on, and the program true, by the way, the program which tells you, if I run this command, which program am I running? True is a program. And the ex only thing that this program does is it returns, it returns an error code of zero. And there's also a false. And it always returns an exit code of one. So, um, and so this while, um, the, this while loop, every time it, every time it, it, ex it has executed the loop, it will check, so it will, at the beginning, and, or before every iteration of the loop, it will check, it will run this, pro this command and check whether the, the command is still true. And only if it's still true, we're running. There's also a command called until. Guess what that does? It checks whether it's false. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, what if we want to? What is that? What if you want to have? Um, I have now a, a, a file with names, and I want to loop over the contents of that file. I can use the read comma, the while, the read, and the redirect to do that. So I said while read name do echo. Hello? Done. And then I'm redirecting the file into the whole block. So it, the read will read one line from the file, save it as name, then use that name in the loop. And then next time it reads the next name. And when it reaches the end of the file, the read command will fail. And the while will say, okay, that's it, I'm finished. Um, yeah, that's it. I think my, yeah, that's only the exit, the, the, tr the results of the, um, the thing of the exercise, the exercises. So, um, again, we can also use until, um, that does exactly the opposite. It checks whether it's false and you can continue doing something until this condition is true. So until you have what you need. Um, yeah, any questions?
Oh my God. I didn't do it again, did I? Can someone to speak to me? Yeah. Hello. Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> did you try to talk to me last time during the lecture at all? No, no. Because sometimes when I when when my when I hook my my MacBook up to the projector, it disables the the sound for some reason. That it has done this the, the first week. It has done this, and I think it's done this again. Okay. Oh, I can hear you. So, okay. Were there any questions about um, about for loops and uh, about variables? Uh, actually, um, so if I have a variable in a child directory, is it possible for me to get it out into the parent? Oh, sorry, in the child bash. Can I get it out into the parent bash, or is that not really possible? I don't know how to do that, um, to be quite frank. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a way, but I would have to Google it myself. Um, one thing that I usually do if I need to do something like that, let me show you, um, is uh, So if I say bash del me dot sh, um, this has set the variable name, but only inside the subshell, into the, in, inside the shell process. So if I say no, it's still the old, the old one that we had before. What you can do is you can say source del me, and that executes. Um, that executes the contents of that file in your current environment. And it has said it. That's usually how I do it. If, if I need to, um, if I need to move, uh, if, if I need to, if, if I have a separate script that sets an environment variable that I want to use in my, in my shell. Um, but usually don't want to do that too often. So um, well, it says that depends on the context, you can export variables between shells. Um, yeah, so there, there are ways to do that, but it depends, on, it, it depends on, I think it's a little bit more complicated. I don't know how to do that. Specifically, in um, Hanjan, in the last example that you gave, a while read the name. Um, yes. This name is an this is the name of the file. It's a name. No, you're right. Maybe I should have. Um, so what I did. Um, yeah, you you're right. I might have. Um, I can do it like that. So what it does, it executes this while loop. And this while loop, this whole while loop itself also has an input stream and an output stream. Can you share your um, the screen? screen? We, we cannot see the example. So if you go back to the screen, we, uh, the while loop. <laughs> <you read. laughs> so, so here, this um, this this whole while loop has has one joint input and output stream. So one input stream, one output stream. And um, oh. what I'm doing is I've, I've I've now replaced the variable name here with person to make sure that to to show you that this is really has nothing to do with one of the other. I'm piping yes. the file's name into the standard input of the whole of the whole loop. And, um, but the only thing that reads from the standard input stream is this read command. So that's why, that's why it works. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, this concludes our third week of Bash. Next week, um, we get into if statements. So we get a lot more of these uh, true false things. And we'll also start to talk about, oh, and we'll, I'll give you also an overview about how to create a shell script. So a program that runs in, that runs in. Um, mind you, Bash is a very compl is, is a very powerful, very complicated program. This is only an overview that I've given you and four weeks isn't enough to learn everything. Um, but there should, there are also very good um, tutorials out there on the internet, on YouTube, on, uh, Linda.com. By the way, um, check most universities in the center, not all of them, of course, but most of the, um, of the universities in our center have subscription to Linda.com. It's a very good um, tool to learn from. So, yeah, that's true. We do have that at UNSW. Um, now I need to check if it's also for uh, students, um, the subscription. Okay. Anyway, I anyway, we'll still have we'll still have one more week to go. Um, thanks for joining me, and the software kind of course, which um, I still use quite a bit. Not quite as much this week then, two weeks before, but still, uh, they're quite they're quite useful. Um, yeah, see you next week. Bye. Thanks. 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 We have a seminar.